Uh, come on, give God a hand, clap of praise. Uh, that's praise and worship for you. Amen. Come on, give God another hand, clap of praise. We going right into the word. I just feel led. Anybody feel led to go right into the word with me? I just, when you get in, you want to get in the glory, you want to bask in what God has. I don't want to miss out on anything God is doing. That was a, a powerful praise and worship service. So I want to go right in. Say right in. I want to dip my toe right in. No, no, no. I want to dip my, go up to my leg. No, no, no. I want to go ways deep. No, no. I just want to go swimming. Anybody want to go swimming in the glory? You understand what I'm saying? There's uh, an Ezekiel. He, he dipped his toe in. Then no, no, no. Then he got his uh, legs in. Uh, then he got his, uh, his body in. And then no, no. He just decided I'm going to go all in. Sometimes you just got to go all in. Look at your neighbor and say, got to go all in. Sometimes you got to just dip deeper than what, go deeper than you've ever gone before. Amen. Go with me to the book of Romans, the book of Romans, chapter 8, and, and I'd like to talk to you from a point of uh, the glory takes work, uh, but, so, but show me the glory. Go show me the glory. Uh, Romans chapter 8. I, uh, uh, the first week I dealt with the, the Bible. We, we're Glory Bible Fellowship, right? Uh, so the first week, two weeks ago, I dealt with the word through the Bible. Say the Bible. So I went and taught you the, uh, the message uh, about the, uh, the glory going to appear in a season, and this season is now. I did, dealt with it biblically so that you could get an understanding where we were going through the feast. Say the feast. Are y'all recalling what I taught? <laughs> what I'm saying to you is September was going to be a, a, a rough month in the natural, but not for us spiritual people. <laughs> not for us people filled with the spirit. <laughs> not for us that got joy in our hearts. <laughs> not for us that's been through sowing in the feast, <laughs> been understanding Yom Kippur, been understanding what we're doing. We believe and we received a supernatural breakthrough like never before. That was us. That is us. Say that is us. That's me. That's what we dealt with the first time. That's the Bible. Say the Bible. And then last week, I dealt with the fellowship. Say fellowship. See, I, I dealt specifically with the fellowship, the fellowship between uh, God and us, or in that case, it was Moses and God. What I'm talking to you is there's an experience that we have that links uh, the, the blessings of God with the fellowship of God. And, and so where we ended up is Moses got up in there and said, God, I, just, I, 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 I don't need to see the miracles. I already saw the miracles. Uh, I don't need to see the blessings. I already seen the blessings. Matter of fact, when we left Egypt, we came holding gold and silver and everything they gave us. They gave us the spoils of war and we didn't even have to fight. Let me help you out. That's what Moses said. So Moses got up in the mountain and said, I seen all that. What I want to see is you. I want to have fellowship with you. I want to commune with you. Can you just show me your face? Show me your glory. And, and God said, well, I can't give you that, but what I can do is I'll put you at a place. And that place is a rock. Say the rock. Y'all remember this. Is this. Are you recalling this message? Uh, what I'm saying is God has put you in a spot where you can get fellowship with God if you could just get his glory train <laughs> and get a fellowship with his glory train. The glory train is real. Moses, uh, that's in Exodus 33. And then Exodus 34, it dealt with the glory train comes with judgment, but it also comes with thousands of mercies. Y'all remember that? How, off, how awesome was it even last night during the movie? They brought up how, how many times God forgave us, forgave us, forgave us, and the mercies and, and the blessings of God. What I'm saying is this is when you're in fellowship with God, you're allowed to make mistakes. <laughs> y'all, 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 y'all got quiet on me. Uh, uh, Moses wasn't perfect. <laughs> David wasn't perfect. <laughs> Paul wasn't perfect, y'all, y'all, y'all. Uh, there was only one perfect man, uh, and that was Jesus. Uh, and we strive to be like God, but we're not at God yet. Uh, but so when you have fellowship with God, you're allowed to make mistakes. Even Peter, uh, as a fighter like he was, uh, he cut off somebody's ear. Jesus said, no, that was a mistake. Let me fix that for you. Uh, what God is saying, even when you make mistakes, if you're in fellowship with God, he'll fix that for you. But that was last week. Say last week. This week, we're dealing with the glory. Say, can I deal with the glory? So we got the glory Bible fellowship. Look to there and say, show me the glory. I, 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 there's an experiential uh, opportunity for you to go up. Say, go up. Anybody want to go up? 
Yeah, we're going to go up in this glory like never before. Uh, the story is going to be changed. Uh, the message is going to be changed. Uh, God has dealt with this in three different ways. He got the Bible, the fellowship, and now the glory. But then you also got the Logos word, uh, uh, the Rhema word, and now tonight's going to be the prophetic and apostolic word. Uh, what I'm saying to you is God's getting ready to do something. There's a glory anointing in this house. Uh, if you're anointed for the glory, just, just, just tap somebody. Say, I'm anointed for the glory. I'm anointed for the glory. I'm anointed for the glory. God, God, has wiped his, God has wiped his sweat on me. The sweat equity that God put out through Jesus. The sweat equity that God put out through Solomon. The sweat equity that God put out through Paul. All that work that they did for us is now coming to pass where I get to swim in the glory. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I just feel like preach. Can I just preach today? Would it be okay if I could just minister straight out of my spirit today? God had begun to start to move in our lives, and I've seen what God is getting ready to do. Anybody seen where the victory is going to happen? If your fight was strong, your victory is even stronger. Uh, can you just bask in that for a moment? The reason why Jesus had so much glory, the reason why Paul was able to walk by and people get saved, the reason why Peter was able to have so much glory, because they fight with strong. What I'm talking to you is John, even John the, the revelator, he had much glory on him. He was able to see the visions of God. Why? Because he had glory on him because his fight was in strong. Sometimes you got to understand that when you get imprisoned by the enemy, that's your glory experience getting built up. Oh, that. Look to them and say, I got the glory. So if you're fighting financially, if you're fighting physically, if you're fighting mentally, what God is saying is you got to get a buildup of your glory. The build that's about to explode. Your volcano of glory is about to erupt. Anybody want an eruption? Anybody ready for an eruption of the glory? Look to them and say, show me your glory. Romans chapter 8, when you get it, say amen. We're going to start from the beginning. I just want to walk you through a couple of steps before we get into the message. I just, I, I, I feel like we, uh, uh, you know, I'm a word guy. I'm a word guy. I just, I love to get the word out. So this, if y'all don't know one thing about me, there's one scripture that I will nurse, build, strengthen you through. And that scripture is Romans 8. It's, it, that, I, I, that my, I've been founded in uh, Second Timothy, but I live in Romans 8. So, there is a, therefore no condemnation to those which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Let me help you out today. What he's saying is, if you did wrong in the past, if you're walking in the spirit now, you can't hold yourself bound to those problems from the past. Stop blaming yourself. <laughs> Stop being guilty for what you used to do. Uh, there's a whole lot of preachers that used to be used to be, and now they're powerful men of God. There's a whole lot of people that used to be used to be that are now doing things for the kingdom. So don't hold yourself uh, uh, to who you used to be. Too many times we held ourselves till we was a fornicator. <laughs> we was a drug dealer. <laughs> we was a drunk card, <laughs> but you're not no more. So stop condemning yourself to what you used to be. I'm going to help you out, <laughs> women. If you was a fornicator, right, you can believe for supernatural virginity. Man, I, I'm going to say it to you. <laughs> if you was a fornicator, <laughs> you can believe yourself for supernatural virginity. <laughs> God will seal you up, straighten you out, and get you right back to when you're, so when you get married, you, you're, you're fresh anew. I don't care how many children you had. <laughs> well, how you could be a virgin? <laughs> God did it. He did it for Mary. Mary. Mary wasn't a virgin when she done, when she was done, but she was a virgin when she started. Why he what he did for Virgin Virgin Mary, he could do for you. Ah, uh, y'all, 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 men that are single, y'all waiting for that wife. You should be thanking God. Hallelujah. He straightened out my innards so my outers are right. Uh, y'all will catch that. Y'all, it'll catch up to you. And if you marry, you just thank God that your your your, your wife became your first. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I had me a virgin. Praise the Lord. But well, she had a baby already. That's all right. 
<laughs> because God did that <laughs> did it supernaturally. I can believe that. See, y'all, y'all don't have the faith like I have. I believe. Anybody believe like what I'm believing? That y'all could, God could sew it up, lick it, strip it up, make it tight, and do everything right. Look, look at this. Verse 2 says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free. Say free. From the law of the sin and death. <laughs> the law of the Spirit. I, 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 can I just spend a moment there for a moment? <laughs> when you walk in glory, <laughs> the law of the Spirit walk with you. <laughs> uh, you don't have to worry about what you used to fight and who you used to battle with because the law of the Spirit is taken over. The law of the Spirit means that you're free from sin. You're free from death. You could go to war knowing that you can't lose. So I'm fr I got the law of the spirit. Uh, the law of the spirit. That's going to be a teaching in, in uh, October. I'm going to do a teaching on the law of the spirit. How many people know there's a powerful spirit of God law that you could deal with? I'm setting you up for October. I, 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 don't see, I, I said, well, what happened in September? I'm not handling that. <laughs> Prophetess is back. <laughs> <laughs> I got September 13th wrapped up, but after that, amen, hallelujah, I got my peace, let me start, <laughs> verse 3, say verse 3, say the law of the spirit, say look at, look at it, I want you to back at verse 2 for a moment, the law of the spirit, y'all need to write this down, this is not part of my... My my three points in a in a in a hoop. This is not part of that, but uh, this is uh, this is uh, the law of the spirit. This is my preamble to my message. Some people don't understand that there is a once you come into the body of Christ. When I when I mean you really fully connect. I'm not talking about them fakers and shakers. I'm not talking about Bible readers on Wednesday and Sunday. I'm talking about people that understand who they who their father is, understand who God is in their life, and they walk in the law of the spirit. If you walk in the law of the spirit, there's an open door that has to touch you. There's a breakthrough financially that has to go on you. You you didn't see Jesus beg for nothing when he needed something. All he did was break some bread and some fishes and, and fed multiplies. What I'm saying to you is the law in the spirit there is supernatural breakthrough that goes with that law. Let me help. That's why we're teaching the blessings of Abraham. That's why we're teaching these things, these 50 days of financial freedom. Why? Because there's a law of the spirit that gets you physically prepared, financially prepared, emotionally prepared for your 100% healing. The law of the spirit. I'm going to give you one of those laws right now. Sow your feces. Three feces. Law of the Spirit. The Bible tells us that when you sow those three feast seeds, Passover, Pentecost, Feast of Tabernacles, there are seven things that go with that. How many? It is guaranteed. That, that is not a promise. That is not a warranty. A warranty means if it breaks, he'll fix it. A guarantee means it's got to happen. Lifetime guarantee. Lifetime warranty is if it breaks, I'll fix it again. Guarantee means it's never, it's never going to break. How many people know that Jesus, the Lord, is the only one that take a picture, right? And if, if it don't look good, he'll rip it up and take another one. Rip it up and take another one. Rip it up and take another one. He'll rip it up and take another one. You can go to one-hour photo, and you, if you can't get it right, that, that it's too bad. You don't pay for it. This in Jesus, if your picture, if your life picture don't look right, God will rip it up because the law of the spirit says that you're supposed to look good. Uh, the law of the spirit is supposed to be you supposed to be whole. The law of the spirit is supposed to be you financially free. The law of the spirit is your marriage is right. Uh, the law of the spirit is your children are saved. Uh, the law of the spirit says that everything is is right with you. There is no sin and death in your life. So I'll take what you used to look like and, and get you back to that plus looking better. And, and here's the new picture. And you can take that picture and over and over again, and God will do it. But that's the law of the Spirit. That's another sermon series sometime in October. 
We're going to tell Romans, say, the glory. Look to the and say, show me your glory. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. Because we are glory Bible fellowship. Say, we here. For what, what the Lord could not do in that is weak through the flesh, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin into flesh, that the righteousness of the Lord might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Say, after the spirit. Yeah, this is good stuff here. This is the preamble. I ain't got my message yet. This is the preamble. Uh, uh, this is the law of the spirit. Say, the spirit. How about you know when we go to movies like we did last night, we're flowing in the law of the spirit. But when we go to other stuff, I ain't going to say nothing else. They're straight out of Compton became a phenomenon. People are putting straight out of Dade County, straight out of uh, KC, straight out of, you seen the shirts, right? Nobody puts, I haven't seen one, I didn't see one yet that says straight out of Jesus. If you've seen one, that'd be nice. You should buy it, straight out of Jesus. Straight out of the Holy Ghost. That the righteousness of the Lord might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And how about, how about I give you a little, no, a little news? How about War Room beat, War Room with only a thousand theaters, beat uh, straight out of Compton with 3,000 theaters on Friday night. That's what you call the power of prayer. The expectation for the whole weekend was four million. They made four million on Friday night. And you want to talk about some prayer to saints? We was in there and boy fighting with God right there. That was awesome. And that was funny. For they not a, for they are after the flesh do mind the things of for they that are after the flesh do mind things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. That's why uh, if you're spirit-minded, the things that are fleshly, that you don't desire them, you don't want them. And that's why you need to check what line you're walking on. But this is a whole other message. Remember, the, this is the, the law of the spirit message. I'm still checking my, my young people because they're still dealing with that. For to be carnal-minded is death. Say meatheads. Car the word carna uh, is the uh, Latin word is for meat, right? The Spanish word. Uh, uh, that's why you see carna. Uh, you ever been to uh, uh, carna asada? That's that uh, steak, right? That's that beef. Carna asada, right? Let's see. To be carnal minded, but is the spiritually minded is life and peace. Which one you would want? If you was on the uh, uh, let's make a deal, and, and carnal minded is under door number one. You knew the doors ahead of time. And spiritually minded was under door number two. Now, door number one had money, had, had jewelry, had um, things on it. You knew it. Door number two had eternal life and wisdom. Which one would you pick? But one, but, but one had the new car. One had the new house. One had all that. Come on now, there's somebody in here that would, might think about taking number one. At least be honest with yourself and say, you know what, I might think about it. <laughs> but how about when you pick door number two, when you walk through, all right, you know what that dude says? Because you picked door number two, you get all the benefits of door number one without the sin and death that go with it. <laughs> but that's the truth. Door number two, because it comes with life and wisdom, you get everything else that goes with it. <laughs> the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom, <laughs> and all these things will be added unto you. <laughs> uh, the Bible says that he gives you the power to create wealth because that establishes covenant with you and your father. <laughs> what God is saying is that's already there. <laughs> if you get swimming in the glory, <laughs> you'll never drown, uh, but you will be overtaken by the blessing. <laughs> Y'all with me? Say, I'm taking door number two. 
I'm taking door number two. Show me your glory. Verse five, uh, verse five, for they that, no, verse six, for to be carnal mind is death, but spiritually mind is life, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. I mean, it's enemy against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. So when you are walking in the carnal minded, you've already separated yourself, you divided yourself against God. So you can't, you, you won't even understand the laws of God because you already separated yourself. This is good stuff. But you are not in the flesh, so, so then uh, they are in the flesh, cannot please God. <laughs> Ooh, boy, y'all need to highlight that. If y'all have a, a way in your app to highlight that, that's the one you want to highlight. Because when you're walking in the flesh, whether you spirit-minded or not, when you walk in the flesh, just for a moment, when you and your spouse get into an argument and instead of doing it in love, you yell and scream, just for the moment. When, when you go to the doctor and the doctor says you, you'll never be healed and you take that in just for the moment. When, 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 uh, when uh, you uh, take gossip in and you share it just for that moment. The Bible says when you're walking in the flesh, at that moment you cannot please God. You put yourself in enmity. How many people know that I want those moments? Look, you say, I don't want those moments. Matter of fact, you, you could uh, apologize right now to God and say, God, I don't want those moments. I made, them, I made some mistakes, and I'm, I'm probably going to make some more. But God, right now, just I repent ahead of time for those moments. <laughs> I, I, I know <laughs> that uh, uh, there's a, that thing that happens when I get outside of myself, so I'm not going to, because I, I don't, I, I don't want to be in a place where I'm not pleasing God. Say, show me your glory. I, I haven't got to my message yet, but I'm there. I'm almost there. But be not in the flesh, but in the spirit, so that, uh, uh, so it be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. It means if you don't have the spirit, you cannot be Jesus' child. That's what the Bible's saying. Not me. Don't get mad at me. Because you're... You are your father, the devil. That's in John 8. Don't, don't think I'm, I'm not quoting myself. That's quoting God. John chapter 8. You are your father's, the devil. Look it up, John 8. That's a, Jesus said that. That was in red letter. He, he, told, he told them publicans and us, uh, uh, he said, you are your father, the devil. Imagine in the church square telling people that outside in the church festival right on the porch of the church saying y'all you can talk to me all you want but you are your father the devil <laughs> some of y'all need to be bold enough and say say unk say cuz I love you but right now you are your father's the devil Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I, I just telling you. you uh, John 8, 44. Y'all want to put it up there? Put it up there. What I'm saying is you need to go and quote God. Say, hey, listen, I'm not quoting me. I, this might not be how I feel, but this is how Jesus might have felt by your activities. You are your father's the devil. Sometimes you might have to tell you. You got to be bold enough and say, brother, sister, mommy. Daddy, faker that come to church on Wednesday, son. Oh, did, uh, uh, you said here, you are of your father, the devil. They're going to say, well, you such a holy roller. Yes, I am. Let's read it. Let's read it. Let's read it. Let's read it so you can see it. You are your father's, the devil. And the lust of the father ye will do. I'm not missing words. Y'all think this was me. This Jesus has said this. This is, if you had if if we had the red letters up here, 
it would be in red. <laughs> what I'm saying is this is the reality that we live in. We try to sugarcoat the gospel, and you cannot do it because it's sitting right there in bold. <laughs> Jesus was strong enough to say it, and you got to be strong enough to say it. Uh, uh, I, I'm going to pick on somebody. I had a, a, um, I had a friend a long time ago. Uh, his name was, uh, was Killer. No, no, his name was, I'm telling you, his name was Killer. Yeah, that was his name. Matter of fact, his his son is 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 my, is a uh, Shawnee's my cousin, right? First cousin. He was she was uh, with him. His her son is on Facebook, right? He always got in trouble. His name Rat Ratcliffe. So that's why they call him Killer, because I guess Ratcliffe is better is not as good as as Killer. I'm going to talk about it. He ain't listening, so I don't care. <laughs> but when you name yourself killer, when you do the activities that go with your name, that's why when, uh, when you got to really believe when you name these children, how you naming them. I was at a track meet. I was at a track meet. And the kid was named, no lie, Machiavelli. Why would you name your child? This is his first name, Machiavelli. And he w he went track uniform. He's sagging in a track uniform. <laughs> There's some importance with your name. I've already had discussion with, with my son. And he said his son going to have his, his, his name. And, and his son is going to have his name. Why? Because that Adam is significant. <laughs> because Jesus comes as a second Adam. He comes to repair the breach. So my name from the Greek is to repair the breach. So I believe, uh, I, I, I used to be, I used to be a man, why do I want to be called Adam? Adam destroyed the world. You know, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, my dad named me Adam. He, was, cause I was, he named me because I was his firstborn. Right, but I looked at it like, man, he doesn't mark me. I'm like the the. My name is Adam. That's the, that's a, that's either of the earth or somebody who the first sinner. But that's not it. Adam has significance. Matter of fact, there's a whole lot of Jewish kids named Adam because they believe still second coming. Say second coming. Adam the second. That way, he, although we called him AJ, and we still call him AJ, his real name is Adam the second. On his birth certificate, we we he was, matter of fact, I didn't even know what sex he was. He was AJ. <laughs> it's a true story. I was prophesying. Y'all not hearing me today. <laughs> Sometimes you need to prophesy to that baby. I'm not talking about a natural baby. I'm talking about a spiritual baby. Uh, there's a, you got a company getting ready to prophesy. You need to prophesy to that company. Uh, 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 baby, you pregnant in the womb with my vision, and my vision about to come to pass. And, and, and guess what? The glory of God going to leap in your belly. Some of us need to prophesy to our bellies now and so say, uh, that's 20 pounds need to come off. <laughs> we need to prophesy. <laughs> and, and, and let me help you out. <laughs> After the prophecy, don't go to Golden Corral. <laughs> After the prophecy, don't go to Ryan's. <laughs> well, I prophesied it's going to come true. Not if you keep going to Golden Corral, it's not. How many people know that uh, when you go to McDonald's, when you go, uh, I'm getting ready. Uh, I'm getting ready to tell. When you go to McDonald's, when you go to Burger King, when you go to Wendy's, 
they've intentionally put additives that make you want to come back. Yeah. Now, I'm going to help you out. The reason why uh, Wendy's fellow Frosty is because a Frosty make you thirsty. Yeah. I, I'm going to help you out. I, I'm getting ready to help y'all out. I'm, I'm getting ready to tell them. What, I'm going to help you out. Kentucky Fried Chicken, you think you're going for the healthy, gr the grilled chicken? The grilled, one grilled chicken breast from Kentucky Fried Chicken has double or triple the daily needed of sodium. 1,200 to 1,600 milligrams of sodium in the one piece of chicken. Yes, you might have eaten less fat, but you ate way more salt, which will cause you to retain that, uh, that water, and then you get, and guess what? The reason why they sell grilled chicken is so that you can buy the extra large soda. Man, I don't I don't Providence, I done lost my crowd, didn't I? <laughs> they was with me till I start uh, I start talking about their food. Although I could do for hey, 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 I'll make you laugh. I could do for some trials right about now. <laughs> uh, that's the best chicken in town. I ain't, I ain't gonna pick on them. They all right. <laughs> If you want to go anywhere, Stroud. I don't get paid by them, my boy. <laughs> and that $13 uh, two-piece meal, that thing is awesome. <laughs> Y'all looking at me crazy, $13 a two-piece? Yep. And, and you'll be happy eating it, too. And, and that gizzards and those, oh, man, woo. I don't even like that stuff, and it was good. They don't know about no Strouds, boy. You ain't, how many people in the Strouds? How many people want to go back? <laughs> that stuff is right, boy. That's that bougie chicken, yep. <laughs> I'd rather go chicken go while you, you, you go chicken gone. <laughs> Let's get back to my message. <laughs> I done made everybody hungry. Everybody running the strouds right after church. <laughs> Ye are your father, the devil. And the lust. <laughs> I'm talking to you, fat man. You are the father, your devil. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you, Kentucky Fried Chicken. You in your white suit. You are your father, the devil. I'm talking to you, Ronald McDonald. You and your little happy meal. You are your father, the devil. You ain't no Burger King. I know the real king. <laughs> you are your father, the devil. <laughs> and how about Wendy's? Don't she look like Carrot Top? <laughs> <laughs> Just receive, just receive. I, I, just receive, just receive, receive, receive. I know a miracle happened behind me. I, uh, because she swam in the glory just a little bit, the, the miracle came forth. Go back to Romans 8 for me. Romans 8. Verse 11. I'm not prophesying here, but I believe that something miraculous happened with her daddy. 
I'm not prophesying, but I didn't look at the text. I didn't see the text, but I believe a miracle happened with her daddy. I could just believe it. It's my son. Amen. It's my son. It's my son. It's my son. Hallelujah. I know it had to be one or the other. Romans 8, you got it? But it's the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken you mortal bodies by the spirit that dwell in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Say, look, look, they say, shall live. Uh, for as many, uh, here we go, for as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. Look to your neighbor and say, sons of God. Sons of God. Look to your neighbor and say, I don't care what sex you are, you are a son of God. Look to your neighbor and say, I'm a son of God. Uh, I, I'm not just a, a, a son, I'm a friend of God. But what I'm saying, uh, 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 there's something, God is doing something supernatural right now. Uh, you just uh, re receive, 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 receive your sonship, receive your sonship, receive your sonship. You have been brought into the family. The Bible tells us that for you have not received the spirit of bondage again, but have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Say, I'm a son of God. I've been, I've been, uh, I've been grafted in. I've been, uh, I've been signed up by God. That God done signed the adoption papers. I'm in His family. Look to and say, I'm in His family. With the adoption into His family comes the glory. <laughs> Look to and say, I automatically, when I shook the preacher's hand for real, <laughs> when I signed my name on the membership roll, <laughs> when I said thank you, Jesus, I'm in Your family. <laughs> when I repented in front of the the congregation and said, I repent of my sins and I accept You as my Lord and Savior. <laughs> I've got my adoption paper and with the adoption paper came the glory the glory now walks with me the glory now talks to me the glory is now in fellowship with me I get to minister through the glory why because I truly love God he adopted me and said Abba uh, I, I'm your son now I'm in the house I get the glory look at your name I got the glory uh, can I prophesy now somebody need to understand the prophecy is the glory gonna go with you look to your neighbor and say the pro glory where goes where i go the glory goes where i go if i need to lay hands on somebody who needs a healing the glory goes where i go if i need a financial breakthrough the glory goes where i go i lift up my wallet to you god because you signed my paper as my adoption paper the glory goes where i go miraculously even when i lost my job the glory went with me and i'm able to uh, live and make make ends meet miraculously when i had to live in my car i wasn't crying i got the glory that lived with me what i'm saying is i was able to make ends meet it was a struggle for a moment but those that struggle get a bigger blessing can i prove that to you biblically can i show it to you in the bible romans 8 uh, 14, 8 and 16 we getting there we getting there we getting there Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody been with anything? If you've been through some stuff, just, just say, hey, man, I know what you're talking about, preacher. I know what you know what talk about, pastor. I, I've been through some stuff. Romans 8, 16 through 18, we getting there. As we get there, I'm getting ready to establish some things that go with the glory. Say, I got it. I got it. I got it. There's a challenge that we go through that uh, we have an understanding that the glory it has a story. Say, the glory has a story. Look to the neighbor and say, I'm getting ready to tell mine. I'm getting ready to tell mine. I'm getting ready to tell mine. Mine come with some pain, but it also comes with some gain. Mine come with some hurt, but it also comes with some overflow. Mine come with... Uh, can I talk to y'all just for a moment? Maybe I, maybe I got somebody that been maybe through some of the things I've been through. There's a glory in the story. Say there's a glory in the story. And, and my story tells my glory. The heart of my story... The greater the glory. Hmm. The, the heart of the story, the greater the glory. So it, it, the, trouble it not that you're going through what you're going through. Can I look to your neighbor and say, don't, don't mind the problems that you're going through. Don't mind the challenges you're going through. Don't mind the pain that you're going through because God's getting ready to lift you up. Say, lift me up. He get ready to take me higher. He get ready to bless me with the glory. The glory get ready to rain on me. What's that? Uh, 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 
picture more. Let it rain. Look at the neighbor and say, let it rain. So I'm going to give you three points. Got to give you three points? Y'all want them on too? Nah, just a switch. <laughs> i give it to you if you want one, but I, uh, I don't feel that today. I'm going to let that one go. Mm-hmm. Let me start. <laughs> I got one. I got one. Y'all, y'all. I got look, look, look. See, like, go on, preach, preach, y'all. <laughs> the Spirit itself, with verse uh, 16, the Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Look to your neighbor and say, we're children of God. If you don't feel that in your spirit, there's still time at the altar. Because <laughs> the Bible tells us the Spirit got to bear witness with your spirit. <laughs> if you don't feel like you're a child of God, if you don't feel like you're getting blessed like you're supposed to be, if you don't feel like the joy that's supposed to be in your man is, is not in your man, it, it, it's out there somewhere and you ain't get it yet, you need to get yourself to the altar because you're, you're not in the household of faith. That's what the problem is. Because <laughs> it, it, it got to be a bear witness in your spirit. <laughs> you got to feel a peace in your peacemaker. <laughs> you got to feel joy in your joy maker. <laughs> you got to feel the, 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 the legs start to shaking. <laughs> if you're legs not shaking because you're not getting the happy happy you need to get down to the altar because your spirit not bearing witness with the spirit of god he laid on the cross and died three days he got there he came and resurrected so that you could get bear witness with the spirit if you don't have a peacemaker in your peace right now, what I'm saying to you, you need to get down to this altar and don't be afraid. Don't be, don't let pride stop you from your breakthrough. <laughs> don't let, uh, uh, don't let anything stop you from getting your deliverance right now. But, but preacher, he's not to the end of the sermon. I don't care. I'm telling you that you need to come down here now. If your spirit, man, is not bearing witness with the breakthrough that you're supposed to be having, then you need to be down here at this altar. Play some song. We're going to give him two minutes. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Yeah. Come on. Play something soft, man. It's one minute. We got one minute. Uh, there's somebody else. Somebody else is, 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 is knowing what I'm saying. There's a spirit in, there's a, uh, in your, your spirit. You're not feeling the peace that you're supposed to feel. Huh? In that spirit, you're not feeling the joy you're supposed to feel. Huh? In your spirit, man, you're not feeling what you're supposed to feel. There's something that's blocking you from what you're supposed to be getting. Huh? You're trying to figure out why are you going through what you're going through. Huh? Be your spirit is not bearing witness with your breakthrough. Huh? And that's because you're not in the household of faith and you need to get some things right. Huh? It's okay that you do it. Huh? It's okay that we do it. Huh? And we know that there's got to be something that's going to manifest in our lives. Uh, I, I know what I know and I know that somebody needs a relationship with Jesus Christ so that, that freedom starts to hit on them. That, that breakthrough starts to hit on them. You know what? I, I want to confirm a message that I did uh, several weeks ago, several months ago, uh, and when I've been preaching and, and, and I got a, 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 a photo of a, of a food stamp. And I said to myself, why am I getting this picture? I know who sent it, and she did it to confirm what I've been doing. That was the spirit bearing witness with the spirit of God that what I've been teaching is right on point. You don't have to worry about the food stamps no more. I don't care if you get the, the EBT or whatever. It's going to hit you so hard that your breakthrough is going to be overflowing you. That even if you was getting a food stamp card, you're going to turn it in and say, I don't need it no more. You're going to say, thank you, government, but I don't need your help. I, God, uh, the government of God just, be, just paid me back. Uh, the government of God just gave me bear witness with my breakthrough. You was getting government assistance. That's okay. I don't, I don't even care. There's a blessing that you was getting it while you was getting it. But God's saying he can return that around where you're going to be able to assist others. Just raise your hand. If you're up here for your breakthrough, you just raise your hand. We're going we gonna to do some things. Point your hands to these people as they receive. Look to them and say, neighbor, they did the right thing. They they, 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 get, they getting ready to get in that house, get that breakthrough. They getting ready to get it. They getting ready to get it. If your child is up here, you should just be praying and thanking God for your miracle. If your child is up here.
say in Jesus' name, I want peace in my spirit. I know, God, when you, you were whipped so that I might be healed. You were bruised for my iniquities. So, Jesus, I repent for being out of line with you. I want you to be my father for real. I want the spirit to bear witness with my freedom. Freedom with the, from the bondage from sin and death. So, Jesus, I repent. I repent for, and you don't have to say it out loud, just know it in your mind that you re- what you're repenting for. The Bible tells us that God had thousands of mercies. He's applying his mercies right now for you, brother. He's applying these mercies for you now, brother. Daughter, he's applying, he's applying those mercies for you. Son, he's applying those mercies for you. Daughters, he's applying those mercies for you. Mercy is on the, God is on the, is applying those thousands of mercies to the stuff that you did. Even some mistakes that you might do. He's giving you mercy ahead of time. So right now, say in Jesus' name, thank you for receiving my repentance, God. Live your life through me. So that I could be called a son of God. Thank you, God, for accepting me in your family. I feel the peace that's in the house because I'm in your household of faith. In Jesus' name. God, you died on the cross for me so that I might have everlasting life. And I receive that life now. In Jesus' name. Amen. I have a word for Mother Collins. Um, the Spirit of God is saying is he wants you to stop doubting him. Stop doubting him. He's put a voice in you. He's put word in you. And he just needs you to be freely to, to speak that word with confidence as you speak it to others. And many will follow you, says the Lord God. They will follow you even to this house. But stop allowing the enemy to torment you in your mind, to doubt you. Um, I had an opportunity to meet. Her name was Mother Jeep, and she was 102 years old. And she would drive everywhere on her own, wherever God told her to go. Her ministry did not start until she was 62 years old. But God kept her here to be up to 105. So God has said, stop doubting what he has called you to do. Amen. And walk in it with confidence, says the Lord God Almighty. And that know that he has a work for you to do, says the Spirit of God. Walk in it with confidence. You may not have all the accolades and degrees and all that stuff behind your name. You may not even be perfect, like Pastor Adam said. Amen. But just keep putting one foot before the other. Hallelujah. And you already got a testimony when you see the war room. Amen. Like that woman that's that's in there. Hallelujah. Just play something soft. I got two more minutes.
Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. They got their breakthrough. They got their breakthrough. So in 16 says, the Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit. Y'all may be seated if you can. We are the children of God. And if ch children, then heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. Say, I'm heir of the promise. Uh, say, I'm an heir of the promise. Look to neighbor. That's point number one. Say, I'm an heir with the promise. It, I, uh, just like Jesus was blessed, I'm going to be blessed. Look to neighbor and say, the glory bring the blessing. Say, the glory bring the blessing. Uh, uh. I, I want you to know the reason why Moses was so blessed, the reason why his tent was so big. It, uh, you know, they ain't had houses back then. The reason why his tent was so big. Y'all going to get that in a minute. <laughs> but it, believe me, I'm preaching better than y'all just talking right now because y'all still stunned at how many people got that they blessing and you wasn't in the line. Y'all should have been in the line too. It's okay. But the, uh, the spirit itself received a breakthrough like never before. The reason why Moses had the biggest tent is not because he had the most children. The reason why Moses had the biggest tent because he spent time with God. Every time he went up in the mountain while he, uh, he was up, he came back with a fresher glory on him. They had to build him a bigger tent. <laughs> it go catch it in a minute. Y'all go catch it in a minute. Y'all go... When you spend time in the glory, when you're in the presence of the Holy Ghost, when God move on you with signs and wonders, you don't, uh, just because you, you might dye your hair now, but all that gray that you got in the spirit, God is blessing you with, with greater things, with greater uh, responsibility, uh, which you get an overflow of the breakthrough. Your ceiling is higher than everybody else's ceiling. I'm not talking about because the church is bigger. I'm saying because uh, your expectations keep going up. You think about it. If Christ got so was blessed, he matter of fact, they were fighting over his clothes. He was so blessed. And uh, what I'm saying to you will be so blessed uh, that your breakthrough is like never before. Look to your neighbor and say, never, like never before. Now the child, I don't care if you came in on the 11th and a half hour. The Bible tells us that the 11th and the person that came in at the 11th hour got the same check as the person that came in at the first hour. <laughs> if you if you die tomorrow, your miracle is the supernatural blessing like never before. Just if you just joined the church, I mean, just got a relationship with Jesus today. How many people know that uh, God's about to celebrate you? How many people know that we were all prodigal at one point? And when we came to God, that was, we was, we was, we walking out what we were supposed to walk out. <laughs> when we was young and we left the church or we didn't go to church, it was, that's, we was prodigal then. But when we came home, when we found the right place, y'all wish I had some help over here. <laughs> when we decided that Jesus, I need, I need you to be back in my life <laughs> or to be in my life for the first time. <laughs> Jesus, when he was up there in heaven celebrating you. And now he's bragging on you every day. Say, so he's bragging on me. So, and if you're children, then heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, say, uh, say I'm, uh, I'm, I'm equally getting a blessing. The Bible tells us uh, greater works you shall do. But you're saying Jesus was able to feed 5,000. How was he able to do that? Great. Jesus was able to uh, raise the dead. Jesus was able to uh, 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 take the stink off of Lazarus. Why? God said he could do it for you. Look to your neighbor and say, greater works. Say, I'm getting ready to do greater works. In his name. So, so point number one is the blessing come with the glory. Say, show me the glory. He said, it, it said, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Say, glory. Uh, uh, point number two, the level of your pain determines the greatness of your gain. Point number two, the level of your suffering determines the level of your glory. So I go back to my point. The harder 
the story, the greater the glory. Look to your neighbor and say, the harder the story, the greater the glory. I'm going to tell you, the reason why people, there, there's, uh, there's a lot of great uh, ministries out there is because they started with so much pain. You know why people got a great healing anointing? Because at one point they initially needed to be healed. Reason why there's such an anointing on prophetess for finances? Because she comes from the pork and green projects. When you ain't never had nothing to tell nothing about, you had a great story. Your story, it becomes your glory. She, boy, she, they put, rub two nickels together, make them holler, and they, they stretch like never before. And she's going to teach that to y'all. Because let me just tell you how she was able to do for her daddy and do for others and show them the glory. I'm, I'm talking to you. The reason why uh, uh, my, uh, I guess I better say it. The reason why my anointing right now for the, the Jewishness is so strong is because it was so suppressed when I was younger. Because in my, in my youth to be black, I forgot who I was. I had to be reminded of who I really am. Sometimes you have to understand who your story is to create your glory. Sometimes you got to know who you know who you are. I used to, they, uh, it used to bother me when they used to, one of my one, uh, fraternity brothers used to call me Pink Negro. It used to bother the mess out of me. But now I say, thank you, Jesus. I take that <laughs> because that means it, it establishes who I am. <laughs> I'm the white guy that knows about Jesus and who's blacker than black. I'm the blackest white man you know or the whitest black man you know, but I'm both. And I'm okay with that. And by the way, I'm Jewish. By the way. I'm a Jewish dude that knows about the Messiah and knows him well. Uh, by the way, see, my story getting better and better, ain't it? By the way, I've taught uh, uh, thousands of people about Jesus and, and his Jewishness. By the way, I went to Africa twice. By the, uh, my story getting better and better, ain't it? By the way. See how your story begin to, to increase? Your story begin to, to, to tell your story? By the way, I can remember when I was seven years old and I got hit straight on by a fast moving car, 40, 50 miles an hour, flip up in the air. You hear stories about a flip, 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 a lay down, get up, and walk away. Not a, bro not a broken bone into my body, not even a bruise on my body. But that's my story. <laughs> I, 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 I remember. Getting ant infested, whole body exploding. Could have died because I'm, I'm allergic to all insect bites. But prayer, but the glory, but look to your name and say, but sometimes you need a butt in your life, you need God to butt in. <laughs> You, 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 you sit back and you wonder what's going on, but God, but God, uh, 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 there's, there's a healing miracle get ready to happen, but God, not, be, not, because, not in spite of yourself, but because God butted in in your stuff. Uh, don't you know that God will intercede on your behalf? Uh, he put it, he'll put his two cents in and you'll thank him for it. So the heart of the story the greater the glory. Come on, let's keep reading. We, we're almost done. We're almost done. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which you shall be revealed in us. The Bible is clear about this. There's glory getting ready to reveal in you. Look to neighbor and say, there's glory getting ready to reveal in me. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? We know that in the text it goes on and says, all good 
come to those. We know that's in the text. But I want to take you to 2 Corinthians 3 and 18, and we're going to close. We'll, actually, we'll read 17 and 18. 2 Corinthians 3. I tried to get to it last week. I wonder why God was holding it, because he was holding it for this week. I'm going to prophesy out of this. 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18. If you look at our, if you look at our logo, it's on there. I want you, this is point three, and we're going to prophesy to ourselves from this point. Second Corinthians 3, 17 and 18. Look to your neighbor and say, this is me. Now, the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. How many people know there's liberty? Stand to your feet. Look to the neighbor and say, I'm, I'm free. Where the, where the glory is, is freedom. So I'm free because the glory go with me. Where the spirit, where the now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, y'all don't have to repeat this. This there is liberty. Say liberty. Next text. But we all, with an open face, beholding as in the glass the glory of the Lord, and changed into the same image, from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. The text is clear. That as you keep looking at God, as you keep looking at the image of God, as you keep ministering to yourself that you are God's family, you start to look more and more like your daddy. You become a spitting image of God. We get closer and closer. We get to go up and up. We get to be transformed into who we've been watching. Don't you know that if you, if you eat so much chicken, you turn into a chicken. If you eat too much pig, you turn into a swine. What I'm saying is if you eat too much God, you can never eat too much God, you will turn into what you eat. It. I say practice what you eat. <laughs> Not practice what you preach, but practice what you eat. You should be eating enough Lord uh, that you start to look like him. Uh, you should be eating enough God that you taste like him. Uh, you should be eating enough God that you start to walk like him. If he can walk on water, you can walk on water. <laughs> if you can raise, if he can raise the dead, you can raise the dead. You should be able to get up out your chair and walk, my son. <laughs> the Bible is clear. It says you will look like God. Lay hands on your chest right now. Put it in your spirit. Say, God, Jesus, glory. I'm going to read you. I'm going to eat you. I'm going to look like you so that I can be transformed into you. I'm going to be a spitting image of you. Where you healed, I healed. Where you delivered, I deliver. Financial breakthrough is on me. Debt free is on me. Pride is off of me. Anger is off of me. Only thing that's on me is attributes of you. I am a living fruit of the, of the Spirit. Peace. Kindness. Long suffering. Joy. That's all on me. It's all on me. So, God, I just thank you. I thank you for saving me. I thank you for keeping me whole. And I thank you for the peace that's on me now. Because you transformed me from glory to glory. In Jesus' name. Come on, give God a hand, clap of praise. Glory, glory. 
Hallelujah. As Pastor was preaching, we already had an altar call in the middle of the service. And I heard God speaking and saying, what's your story? And out of that, he began to already tell me what my message was going to be for next week. That you are birthing God's story. But what's your story? And sometimes we forget that we have a story. I know my story, but God is having you to birth your story. I can look around this room and I can about write the story that you should be telling. Tierra of coming out of church hurt and church brokenness. Jessica number one, coming out of religion of Catholicism and being used by God. Brother Charles having a story of being an ex-gang banger. You're birthing God's story. Deacon Dale coming from off the street, surviving. Those I say surviving a gunshot, being dead for 10 minutes, but God. Single parents that's in the room of stories of what you used to be. I used to be a fornicator. I used to be used by man, but God. Some doctor said, some man said, some mama said that I'll never mount up to be anything but God is my story. Just to not, people not want to accept you and you refuse to fit in, but God. <laughs> and you, well, you know your story just get better and better. It's get better and better. Hallelujah. So we're just going to close with this and we're going to move into, we have a first fruit that's coming up in our tithes and offering. And I didn't know this when I was in church at the Church of Praise. I, I forgot the name. And I really enjoyed something. I didn't even tell this to Pastor Adam. And he did it without me even saying anything. Is that I enjoyed that they did their offering at the end of the service. I just thought that was just so cool. And I really, because the way it allows the spirit to be able to move. Amen. And then today he came in. That was like, see, that was a kiss from God. Hallelujah. So just say with me, say, Heavenly Father, I am getting in position to birth my story. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to transition um, September the 1. I want us to be mindful. Um, and Graham Lotz, the daughter of Billy Graham, husband went home to be with the Lord and she there's some things out there is a praying for Israel and she we are claiming that day September the first amen to play for Israel and also um Justin get something out there I've been passed out and spoke about this the month of September every Wednesday we're going to be dealing with the Jewishness of Jesus how you are grafted in and how the blessings relate to you for the whole entire month those Wednesday other ministries does not have this you need to invite your friends out. We're not taking anything away from them. Amen. But if they want to be able to understand and have a closer relationship with Jesus Christ, they need to be here on those Wednesdays. Amen. Started in September. And I advise some of you, uh, maybe September the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, that you just come into the present God in a different way. He may tell you to fast from TV. He may tell you to fast from food. Amen. Or you may do some extra time in prayer. But I just feel let in my spirit that those first three days is, is getting you in posture for what God is doing for the month of September. Amen. Regardless of no doom and gloom or what have you, when you're connected with God, amen, you're in the safety and the presence of God. Hallelujah. Can you bring me my um, cell phone here? As pastor was preaching, um, I do want a flag man to be a ministry to be birthed. Every ministry in this congregation, I first did it. So regardless of what it was, it was up here singing, I did it, preaching, tithes offering, did it, the flags, did it. I want to see someone that actually is called to the flag ministry. Because whether you knew it or not, with the Spirit of God this morning, everything that God gives us, it has a purpose to it, even though you may not know it. That, that presence, and when they were singing, that particular color flag, blue, is for revelation. 
and blue is for the Holy Spirit. And so as I was using that, so when people use the flags and those colors, that's actually what God is releasing. And so being that that was a spirit of revelation, as I sat there and there was a song that they was praying, uh, playing, and the one, that's the one you had, you was very heavy on the drums. Um, I recorded that and that middle song, and I sent that over to my son, Kennard. And man, you guys know he's 20. He's, he's trying to be out there on his own, live on his own. Well, he had went and got these little piercings in his lips. And of course, we know we was not pleased with them or what have you. And also, Pastor Adam, unbeknownst to him, and young people need to listen up. He got to go and help out or what have you. They personally sent a letter to Pastor Adam and said, uh, remember, anyone that's going to be working, this is with the Kansas City Chief, volunteering, cannot have any piercings of any kind on their face. So you think we, uh, you, we think we're exempt. Now we as parents, we already knew, we talked about that, stated about that. But people in the world still don't like you to look like the world working for them. Let me, let me just help y'all. Y'all want to get y'all, y'all little tattoos and all that and all that because the world is doing it. Amen. And even though the corporations don't claim God, they still don't want you looking like a hot mess working for them and representing them. Oh, I'm preaching real good. I don't call no punches with my children, nobody else's children. I come straight down the line. And so, and even behind the scenes, he was wise enough before he came to be with his father. He, he, he FaceTimed me, Mama, I want you to see this. He already texted me and said, I did something stupid, and I know it's after the fact. And I still, okay, said what I had to say. And Pastor Adam shared that with me. And so I sent that video, but you playing the drums. As I was sitting there, and I stated, hey, he said, amen, I need to see that. My reply back as a mother, you should have been playing those drums with my little emoji face. Y'all know I like those. He says, yeah, I know. I'm work it, working on it. I have been keeping up with the radio station when I can, and I got rid of those snake bites. They don't finish. I say, praise God. What did the Lord say? Because in order for him to remove them, I knew that the Lord had to say something. I'm talking about the spirit of revelation. Y'all see how I tied the, the flag in? And you remember when we was up here and I said, I send the glory. We send the glory to our families. He says, he made it clear, why would I want something that symbols I was bitten by Satan? <laughs> Robo. Glory! You can't tell me God can't speak. Let, let me speak to the mothers. Because I have minutes of so much to you mothers, even though you're older than me. If you compromise to keep them, you will lose them. I don't care if you got small children. I don't care if you got grown children. If you compromise Jesus, you will never win them. And this is where so many parents lose it at. I don't need no, don't need no, nothing from my feet. I just fell. I have never compromised with my children or their sin or their shenanigans, as I may call it. I just turned them over to Jesus. I will never bow down to the ways of the world. Oh, I'm speaking real good. I'm prophesying because some mothers in here, you've been compromising. You've been compromising. I don't care. You've been compromising. Some of you maybe got grandchildren, adult children. You've been compromising. You trying to appease them and go never um, get them to come into the house of God. It is your integrity and your character. More is always caught than taught. So we're talking about God, what, showing his glory and releasing a spirit of revelation over your children. And my daughter, uh, as Pastor was talking about names, it's not a pastor, you weren't even in here on Wednesday. I texted them from Miami, Florida, because they were talking about the name of Sarah, how that her name was changed, the Abraham name was changed. And I text them and I says, and tell the women, be cautious about what you name your children, because their destiny is tied to that. 
And so I say this to that yell, Ivana Blackstock, because when I want to name her Arishika, at the long name out of my biology science book, her father says, no, we're going to name her Danielle. And it's the feminine name of Daniel. And when she began to line up and lay hold of that, all, all will go well for her spiritually. You cannot name a child Michael. Cannot name him Gabriel and all these names out of the Bible and you don't hold up to it as doing your part on the back end as a parent. You got to understand. I, the Lord was speaking to me. I had no idea that God was going to speak this way today. He was speaking to me before I even got to the sanctuary. And he said this to me. He likes to talk to me when I'm in the shower. He says, Satan is not all that smart. When he hears the name, he still thinks it's the same spirit that was dwelling in Israel. So when he hears the name Daniel, he rises up. When he hears the name Michael, Gabriel, Sarah, Abraham, he still thinks they have that same power and that same anointing. So you got to hold up to the name. So then you got to hold up to the name to be the prophet that God has called her to be that rules in government and areas that other people and do not bow down and be powerful in the area of prayer. I'm talking about a name. A name. And some names, even though they may not be biblical, like the name Justin, I gave it to him a long time ago and God says justice. We're talking about a name. And if you don't like your name, change it. If your mama gave you a jacked up name, change it. And you black folks don't go out there getting all that go kuku and all that stuff. You almost know what it means. Kwanika, Kwanika, and all that stuff. If you find it in the Bible, then you use it. So God is birthing your story. What'd you say, Pastor Adam? Yeah, I don't know. I can't even pronounce it what Pastor Adam just said. Hmm. Now see there, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about Danielle, right? Because she's staying home with the baby being healed. And look what she, she going to try to put the baby on front street. She going to talk about, look at her. She sleep doing church. <laughs> but isn't that something? Some must come to church and this is what we look like. We sleep. The word of God is going forth. And this is a very prophetic because this is a baby. See the milk bottle? God is saying, come on, get up off the milk. Get up off the milk. See, he used everything. God speaks through everything. You just got to be attentive to listen when he's speaking. Grown folks, stop sleeping in church. Oh, I know you look like you're awake, but this is what you look like in the spirit. Hallelujah. Can we get in position? Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, God birthed in my story. And I'm getting ready to tell it. Come on, say, God has birthed in my story. You can, I'm, I'm getting ready to do first fruit. Okay, get lined up. Line up, both of you. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, put your hands together. I thank God for this word. I may or not have been here for, the, for part one and part two, baby, but I'm connected in the spirit. Hallelujah. God is showing us his glory. It's, I know one of these is business. Which one? I want to do business last. Are both of these business are one personal. Which one? I want to do personal first. Okay. Yes. Come on. Yours is business, right, Jessica? Okay. Both, come on down, school teachers. Hallelujah. You in the business of changing hearts and minds. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to God. I ain't seen you walk down this aisle yet, son. That wasn't me, that was God. 
You don't decree something in the house of God and don't do it. Amen. The enemy will try to ruin your testimony. He'll ride your back. Hallelujah. Are we ready? Both of you. Say, we profess this day. We profess this day. Unto the Lord God. Unto the Lord God. That we have come into an inheritance. That we have come into an inheritance. Which the Lord swore to give us. Which the Lord swore to give us. We are in the land. We are in the land. Which you have provided for us. Which you have provided for us. And Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ. The kingdom of Almighty God. The kingdom of Almighty God. We were sinners. We were sinners. Serving Satan. Serving Satan. He was our God. He was our God. But we called upon the name of Jesus. But we called upon the name of Jesus. Jesus. And he heard our cry. And he heard our cry. And delivered us. And delivered us. From the power. From the power. And the authority. And the authority. And darkness. And darkness. And translated us. And translated us. Into the kingdom. Into the kingdom. Of our dear son. Of our dear son. Jesus. Jesus. Our Lord. Our Lord. And priest. And priest. We bring the first fruit. We bring the first fruit. Of our income. Of our income. To you, to you, and to worship the Lord, and to worship the Lord, our God, our God. We give it to the priests of this house. Hallelujah. Say we rejoice, we rejoice, we rejoice in all the good, in all the good which you have given to us, which you have given to us, and our household, and our household. We have hearkened to the voice. We have hearkened to the voice to the Lord our God, to the Lord our God, and have done accordingly, and have done accordingly to all that He has commanded us, to all that He has commanded us. Now, Lord, now, Lord, look down, look down from your holy habitation, from your holy habitation, from heaven, from heaven, and bless us, and bless us, and our business, and our business. As you have said in your word, as you have said in your word, and the matchless strong name, the matchless strong name of Jesus, of Jesus, Amen, Amen. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, "The best is yet to come." Hallelujah, glory be to God. Listen, you can't, you can't stop a giver. Hallelujah. Let me just tell you, you can't stop a giver. The devil may try to come against you or I'm moving into tithes and offering, but you can't stop a giver. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You guys, come on, let's stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We get our tithes and offering. The final totals are in for Friday to Sunday uh, from War Room. War Room cost $3 million to make, and it made $11 million over this weekend. <laughs> Glory. We were just a small part, but praise the Lord. We supported our own this weekend. Amen. And, and, and how Amen. much it costs to make uh, straight out of Compton, probably? Uh, $29 million. <laughs> Only reason I know that, I just read the article. So. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but he, he keeps up with stuff like that. Amen. He keeps up with stuff like that. Let's stand to our feet. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God has said and done a lot in here. Come on, we're just moving with God. Say, I'm just going to stay in the flow. Come on, children of God. Don't get out of line. Don't get out of order. Don't get it twisted. Amen. Whatever. The, let the devil be the devil. He's doing what he's supposed to do, but you stay the course. Stay in love. Stay in faith. Hallelujah. So you can spirit your blessings. Hallelujah. If you need to get delivered, get delivered. Hallelujah. Don't miss what God is doing in this season. You will never see this September ever again. The end of the Shemta year, Rosh Hashanah, Day of Atonement, the Blood Moon, and the Year of, and the year of Jubilee, all in one month. That's why it is called the Supernatural Month that is going to be taking place. Amen. Are we ready? We're going to do our financial decree. Do you have your seed in your hand? You need to be a believe in God for what supernatural seed that you're going to bring before him for the Feast of Tabernacle. Um, that last Wednesday, we will start receiving those. But some people who are not in this house, you need to call your family members and friends. Hallelujah. Listen. Um, with me being the power of attorney over my father's affairs, 
Do you think it's a coincidence that he won't, be, he won't miss the feast? He's never don't know anything about the feast. But God says that because anyone that opened up their eyes to this here revelation, this is the blessings, the unlimited blessing. See, everything God is putting in motion and in place. So what the devil meant for bad, God turned around for us. I'm going to say that again. What the devil meant for bad, God will turn it around. We can't always just get fixated on what the issue is or the problem is in front of us. All because of what was going on with Jesse B. I was able to pray with 13 or 14 nieces and nephews and the parents. When I never was raised with a sister, all in a matter of a flip like that, I was surrounded by four of them but God, and connect them who had never been seen or met the other ever before in their life. So, our ways are not God's ways. Our thoughts are not God's thoughts. Let's let God be God. You be you who God had called you to be, and then let God be God. Hallelujah. So I re-raise in the name of Jesus, I declare a decree that I have wisdom to manage my finances. I am a good steward over the finances that God has given me. God is prospering me financially and spiritually, and I have no lack. Listen, right there, you need to see, when they say no lack, you just need to say shalom. All over Miami, I had people asking me, because first they thought I was saying so long, but they caught on and noticed, they said, and they, they, was, and they said, what's that word you saying? I say shalom. They say, what does it mean? I'm glad you asked. My sisters and them, and different ones I came in contact with, because my father never will allow us to say goodbye. He gets angry. He would get angry if you said goodbye because it means like the end. And that's the reason he was, before this church started using Shalom, I gave that word to my dad because I had to find a way to end a phone conversation with him. So that means no peace, no lack, nothing missing, nothing broken, wholeness, completeness. So you have no lack. You have Shalom in your life. Because I am a tithe payer, the windows of heaven are open to me. Literally, there's a window of heaven open right now. And that window is going to be open until the close of the Feast of Tabernacle. Amen? And you need to be mindful of that because the angels are going to be in so much high activity. And remember, they're going to be watching you. They're only going to move at the command of God and your righteousness. Amen? So, Big Brother is watching. If the government is watching and seeing everything, we get more concerned about what the government is looking at than be more concerned about what God is looking at. If you really believe God, you would not do some of the things that you do. I'm going to say it again. If you really believe God, you would not do some of the things that you do. Because he's omnipresent. He's right there in the midst of you. Your angel is standing right here, right now. My angel is standing right here. So why would I act a fool in the presence of my angel when in the next second I may be getting carjacked or something that now I want to call on him. He said, wait, 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 you just act a fool. You just walked out of line, out of line with, your, with this, your brother, your sister over here. Now you want me to save your life? See, we got to wake up to the kingdom principles of God, not the worldly principles. Because I am a sower, my finances, I weep in abundantly. And I multiplied 100-fold. God is assigning his angels 
to work on, this is where it gets personal. This is where God gets down and he knows you, my brother in the blue. So he gets to it. He said, I'm going to work on, you need to say, on my finances. My finances. That's what we can get personal with God. I'm not talking about God working on Pastor Adam finances. I'm talking about, when I say this, he working on my finances. My finances. And I hear God saying that scripture in the book, God, it says, come to me without money. You don't have to have money. God says you will, it'll be a time that you will buy without money. Let's take us back to favor. You don't have to have money when you got favor. Hallelujah. You don't have to have money when you have favor. I'm talking about somebody going to go in to buy a house, and you're going, they're going to tell you you don't have to put no money down. Hey! I'm talking about favor. And all that you're going to have to do is pay the monthly payment. I'm talking about you're going to go look for a car. You need a car. And if you're in your credit messed up, they're going to say, but you know what? I I'm going to give you the 0%, the 0% rate. And you don't have to put no money down. Put no money down. I'm telling y'all what I'm seeing. I'm telling y'all I'm seeing the writings by the hand of God that says, go and buy without money. I'm seeing the hand of God writing that, saying, go and buy without money. Go to the grocery store you'll buy without money. Go to the shoe store you'll buy without money. Go! That's my favor. It's with you. My favor has went before you and prepared the way, says the Lord God. Stop worrying and believe God. Stop worrying and believe God. Matter of fact, when Pastor I was doing that altar call, I sat there. I said, it's morning to be at this altar. And the reason why they need to be at this altar to repent of worrying, because we don't know that worry is a sin. You don't got attached to that when your ancestors said, oh, you just a little worry roar. It is a sin. And my spiritual mother said that to me. It shook and rocked my world. We look at all other type of sins except the one of worry. I told my dad, I said, dad, we're going to believe God. Are you going to pray? Or are you going to worry? Which one is going to be? Because you're going to worry, then stop praying. Just, just shut your mouth. Just shut up. Don't say another prayer to God. I'm going to say it right now. If, you, if, if you're worrying, shut up. Don't talk to God. Don't say nothing to him. You're wasting your time. But if you're going to pray, then don't worry. Oh, I know it's tight. I know I just, just wrote some of y'all. I'm just trying to help you out. Close your mouth. Stop talking. You're wasting your time. Go eat some potato chips or something. Because he's not listening. Why? Because I don't been there. They say, Asia, what, 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 what do you think you're doing? No, I'm just, just telling you about, no, 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 you, no, you're not. You're worrying. Whoa. So there's some things that I, I've taught in the presence of God. So you don't go there because I already done went there some long time ago. And that's the reason why I don't walk that way. You got to be immediately, you got to cast your cares upon the Lord. Say God is assigning his angels. See, I started talking to my angels before I even got there. To work on my finances. Now, how do you believe that right there? Or just shut up, go eat a bag of potato chips. He says, assigning his angels to work on, there we go again, get real person, my finances. What good is you having a million dollars in your bank account? And I don't. I can't trust that you're going to share your million dollars with me. So that's why when Deacon Harris said that, that word that let God be your source, God takes care of his own. Just like the devil takes care of his own, 
It's like y'all thinking that y'all gonna get as rich as those rappers and all that. They sold those, so they sold, they sold to the devil. So that's why he keeping them. But if you want to sell your soul to the devil to be rich and live and live eternity in hell, go right ahead. Baby, it ain't worth that. Hallelujah. I'd rather have peace on earth. Hallelujah. I don't have to be famous and on TV. I'm still well taken care of. I still lack for nothing. For me to be rich and famous doesn't mean that I have no lack. That I'm, I'm not lacking just because you're not on TV and you don't have a million dollars in your account. Hallelujah. God has still kept you. What's your story? The angels to work on my finance so that no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. Oh, we would get that. No weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. He never said, and we, you know, we preach after preacher passed out, and we preach this, we preach this. No weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. No weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. It never said that the weapon wasn't going to form. Help me, people, for y'all, let me say this. I'm not going to talk. For y'all cry babies in America. He said, he did not say that the weapon wasn't going to form. He said that it will not prosper. The devil tried to kill my daddy. But what? It didn't prosper. <laughs> Why? God won't go let him go because my daddy told me he wasn't 100% sure on August the 27th. And I said, let's make sure. See, my daddy, Miami people, they just authentic. I, I use the term, I said one hundred percent. I don't confess Jesus Christ to him before, but I, I, flipped, I said 100% sure. And if I was to say that some of you all in this room, the altar would probably still be full again because I said 100% sure. There's a difference. That's not a maybe. There's no doubt in there. That means if I drop dead today, I am 100% sure that I am connected with Jesus and heaven will be my home. That's why you can walk. When you get like that, you can walk around with the boldness of Christ. Away. Everywhere I was going at, I was out in the city, Deacon. You know, when you pull up, I went over there by the tree. Nothing but thugs and all of that. And I walked out. I, I knew I was out of place. My sister and me in the car, the windows rolled up like, oh, my God. And I walked over because I was, the Lord kept him to go look for a cousin of mine. He's way older than me in his 60s. Lived, they said he lives over there by that tree. And I looked in his face. I said, do you know me? And he looked. And everybody around me, the alcohol by smell and everything. And he came out. He was like, my God. Dudes came around the car what happened. And looking. And one came to the car, mouth full of goals. I said, do you know Jesus? He says, when I was a little boy, I said, well, if you want to die today, right now on the spot, I mean, my full of goals. But he bowed down in the presence of God right there in the streets. Didn't care but all his friends and everything else. He says, no, ma'am. I said, well, let's do it. He said, he had a, he had a cup of uh, Hennessy or whatever it was in his hand. He said, I can't do it. I got this cup. I says, come as you are. That's what's wrong. The church won't let them just come as they are. He'll never forget the Jesus he came in contact as Lord. He'll say, that woman had compassion on me and I had alcohol in my hand and still led me to Jesus Christ. Who knows? As much killing is going on in Miami, Florida, he could have died that night. And God, Send a woman to come by was, that was not afraid. Why? Because the blood of Jesus. When you got the blood of Jesus, you can walk through a war room. You can walk in the pits of hell and not be concerned. No weapon! Thought I had it lost where I was at. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. And every tongue that rise up against you, it shall be condemned. Let them talk about you. God will fix it when he got to come back and he got to give you praise. Hallelujah. Let him call you Holy Roma. Let him call you all, all type of names. His word cannot lie. 
I guess keep hearing. You just need to be you. And let God be God. We pray for miracles, but when you don't have a miracle situation, how you gonna get one? That's what God said to me about my daddy. I, I had to turn around and tell him my daddy, I said, Daddy, see your you your exercise and your body ain't gonna get you, ain't gonna get you only Jesse will get the testimony for that. But when you get through this, ain't nobody gonna be able to get testimony for this but God. But God. Then go back and walk over town. But they done seen you when you kill your body wrecked and cannot move. Then when you stand and go back, they're going to say, that's just your feet. He didn't come back because of karate. Every word out of his mouth now, the Lord been good to me. The Lord kept me. The Lord. And then he got mad at me because I told him that some, some woman said, said that he did not know God. He rose up in his chair. He says, I believe in God. What does that woman talk about? I said, ooh. Got his composure back. You need to be that confident and know, say, I believe in God. When is the last time you got angry with the devil and told him, devil, back up! Because I believe in God. I believe what God says. Be that the little, what is it, the little donkey on strike. I believe, 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 I believe. Whatever it takes. If it takes a cartoon, go home and watch the first strike and look at Eddie Murphy. Say, Eddie Murphy would believe them own words would kept him out of trouble. I believe God. I believe, I believe. So say, the Lord is prospering me in whatever I do. And I have supernatural favor with God and man. With God and man. And September, I decree, is my month for the supernatural. In Jesus' name. I am walking in my authority as a believer. Therefore, through faith, not fear, but through faith, I am the head, not the tail. I am above only, not beneath. So if God said this about you in his word in Deuteronomy 26, 28, 26 and 28, then why are you walking around with your head down? Why are you walking around looking like you don't belong to somebody? When you're in the household of faith and you belong to God, and he told you to walk with your head held high, because you are the head and not the tail, and you are above and not beneath. I, I don't see in that word where it said you had to have any degrees. I didn't see in that word where you got to have so much education I don't see in that word it didn't say who you have to know, but he, he, he told you that you are the head and not the tail. And so when they say, you think you're somebody, say, I'm sure am. I sure am. I am the lender and not the borrower. And if I borrow, I pay it back. I am employer. God has given me witty inventions for my own business, for another funding stream. And I am not the employee. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on and come on and bring your offering down, hallelujah. Come on, expectation. Come on, the devil can't stop it. He can't stop it. He can't stop it. Hallelujah, he can't stop it in the name of Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. 
Those of you that are watching the web, go on the web and make your donation in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, there's a bumper crop for the month of September. And all the sowing that you've been doing from last September, get ready to come all in at one time. Hallelujah. It's a bumper crop. Go take a look at the book of Amos. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now for every seed that was sown, even those that did not have the soul. Father, we speak over them, 2 Corinthians 9 and 10, that you will give seed to the soil. you increase their seed, you increase their food and their righteousness. We thank you for supernatural provision. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for supernatural increase. Father, we just thank you for increasing your people that they believe in you, God. Show yourself strong like never before, Father. Why shall they say that our God, oh, we should be a reproach to him, God? Why should they say, where is our God? Reveal yourself. You're already speaking in the heavenlies. Reveal yourself to those that are against you. For your word says, it is an awful thing for man to fall in the hand of an angry God. Reveal yourself that those that stand against Israel, Father, that they will find themselves even in time past that they cannot stand against the Holy One of Israel in the name of Jesus. We just thank you right now, Father, for the peace of Jerusalem. We thank you for what you're doing because we are spiritually grafted in. We do not curse whom you have blessed in the name of Jesus. Give true revelation, Father, to your people within the body of Christ and churches all over this land. That they recognize that we serve a Jewish Messiah. And we'll give you praise, we'll give you glory, and we'll give you honor. Now, congregation, we point our hand towards the man of God, Dr. Adam Blackstock. We thank you, Father. And I thank you, not only with him being a pastor for Glory by Fellowship, but being a father and a husband that will allow me to be gone for three weeks and to take care of the household, the children, and this congregation, Father. I ask for a threefold blessing upon him in the name of Jesus and all seven areas of his life in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over him right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, that increase comes from the north, the south, the east, and the west, and that a hedge of protection is built around him. We thank you for the seven spirits of God that move upon him in the name of Jesus, Father. We thank you that you have chosen him for the man for this hour, for this dispensation in the name of Jesus. For there is elevation that is coming forth in the name of Jesus. And I'm just now beginning, says the Lord. I'm just now beginning, says the Lord God Almighty. There's elevation. I'm seeing these 40 steps. And those 40 steps represents 40 years, says the Lord God Almighty. 40 years that I'll be walking with you side by side and hand by hand, says the Lord God Almighty, that your destiny shall not be disturbed because I have a people at heart and at mind, says the Lord God. This does not mean that there will be the end of that time. It will just be the end of that assignment, says the Lord God Almighty, that I'm having you to do, not only for this church, but also for my kingdom and the world, says the Lord God Almighty. In Jesus' name, and we said, Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Does you still have offerings come and bring them down? I don't know. You don't close the service off like this. We just say we go. We just say go with God. Go with God. Go with God. Go with God. Remember, walk in love and stay in faith. Amen. Shalom, Pastor Adam. Will close us out. Uh, one, a couple of things. Uh, the, the second, I believe that's the. Tuesday, I mean Wednesday, second uh, Wednesday, and remember that starts uh, the Jewishness of Jesus, right? So that's uh, the it's actually the second, the ninth, the sixteenth, the twenty third, and the thirtieth. So five weeks. So you need to be in the house all five weeks to get the full teaching. Uh, prophetess will be teaching this Wednesday, dealing with uh, why we do what we do. Uh, uh, and then uh, the next week we'll teach, start teaching on Rosh Hashanah. Next week after that we'll teach on, uh, we'll, te we'll start teaching on the Yom Kippur. And then the following week we'll actually have our Yom Kippur service. And then the following week after that will be uh, Feast of Tabernacles. 
Amen. So be in the house because uh, how many people know that Jesus did all of this? We want to do everything Jesus did. You can't be Christ-like if you don't want to walk like Christ. The word Christian is to be Christ-like, right? How many people know that uh, Jesus, well, uh, Jesus wouldn't have did that? Yes, he did. He did every one of these feats. It's biblically proven that he would have and did. So you don't want to miss it. Amen? Stand their feet. Give God a hand clap for another powerful servant. May the Lord bless thee. May the Lord keep thee. May the Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee shalom, peace. Nothing broken, nothing missing, nothing lacking, all whole, all complete. And the Lord then puts his name on you. You are now named by God. And then he blesses us again. So I will do what God would have done. Say a blessing over your life. Thank you, God, for blessing us with the glory. As we leave here, we know that we leave here changed. As we leave here, we know that we, you, we can do exceedingly abundantly with all that you ask or think through the power that worketh in us. God, you're the one that can keep us from falling. And because we seek ye first the kingdom, all things are added unto us. God, we thank you that when our wants and our needs fall in line with the kingdom, we get them automatically. So, God, we just bless you, and we thank you in advance, leaving here knowing what you now have stored up for heaven is coming down the earth on our behalf. In Jesus' name, amen. Come give God a hand clap of praise again. <laughs>